Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Police raid a church for having a drive-in worship service and issue $500 tickets to the entire congregation. Rick Eldridge has a film about never again on religious persecution and Tim Mahoney on the Red Sea crossing. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. We have a religious persecution update here in America during the coronavirus scare, when police in Mississippi literally raided a church for hosting a drive-through worship service where people were in their cars with their windows rolled up. How do you social distance better than that? You're with your family in your car. But no, the police made them roll down their windows, violate the social distancing standard, and then gave $500 tickets to everyone in the congregation. Todd Starnes reports, police in Greenville, Mississippi raided the parking lot of Temple Baptist Church during a drive-in prayer service and issued $500 tickets to all mostly elderly congregants. Pastor Arthur Scott told the Fox News radio show that he was astonished by the actions of the police department and the mayor's office. The pastor said the following, quote, one of the police officers said the mayor wanted to make an example out of our church. I told them to get some more tickets ready because we will be preaching Sunday, Sunday morning and Sunday night. We're, we've been doing it here for three weeks, end quote. But the mayor and the city council banned churches from hosting drive-in services. Let's play a clip of one of the city councilors reading the mayor's executive order. Effective immediately today, April 7, 2020, the Greenville City Council puts in place an executive order that all church buildings close for in-person and drive-in church services until the Mississippi shelter-in-place order is lifted by Governor Tate Reeves. Well, there you had it. Now, the city of Greenville put into place that executive order to close all church buildings, including their parking lots, in violation of the shelter-in-place order until it's lifted by the governor, Tate Reeves. By the way, governors of Texas and Florida say that churches are essential businesses, but not in Mississippi just yet. Let's now play a, a clip of the police actually arresting people and issuing tickets in the parking lot. This is at King James Bible Baptist Church. Right now, 2020, April the 9th, 2020, we got all these police officers. I hate people, God, this is real. This is real deal. I told y'all they was coming to our church today. I told y'all last night that our church gonna be next. And here we go, we, we next, they here, right now on the church property before we even have service. We about to get ready to have service, about to preach. Thank the Lord, we're gonna have some officers here and I'm about to preach the word of God. I'm about to preach the word of God to the officers and they about to give us salutation, but it's all good. God is in control, God gonna get glorified in this. The Lord Jesus Christ gonna be magnified in this. The Lord Jesus Christ gonna be uplifting this. And so, hey, we ain't gonna fault the mayor, we ain't mad at the mayor, we're gonna pray for the mayor. We're gonna pray for those in authority. We're gonna, we, we, hey, we ain't mad at the mayor, I ain't angry at the mayor. In Mississippi, churches are strongly encouraged to hold services online using Facebook, Zoom, but a lot of elderly congregants don't have that access and they wanna do a, a drive up service. This, is, uh, this pastor has been the pastor of a small church for 45 years and he says most of them don't even have smartphones. The church leaders, however, decided to rig up a radio frequency where congregants could sit in their cars and listen to the pastor as he was preaching from the pulpit. Here again, a clip of the pastor actually preaching from the pulpit, which was broadcast into their radio inside the cars. She saw how they handled themselves. How you doing, hey, how you doing sir? If I can see your license, I'm giving you an opportunity to move. You can't be a good Christian not go to church unless you're sick or something like that. The Bible says Jesus loved the church. Jesus. So even though the governor said twice today that you can't stop in parking lot church services, y'all still gonna try to stop it? 
I'm not aware of that. The elderly pastor said on the radio show, quote, the police officer said I might go to jail. If it means going to jail and it takes that to keep me from preaching, I'll be glad to go to jail. Pastor said 25 cars were in the lot, everyone was ticketed, and it shows that the police were overbearing. And that's the news. Our thanks to Todd Starnes for that report. Listen, uh, there, this has gone to court cases in, for example, Kentucky, there was a judge that said, no, churches are allowed to operate under the First Amendment, even during the coronavirus scare, because a lot of these churches are still observing the social distancing requirements, and it's totally safe. In Tennessee, you know there were more suicides last week than there were deaths by the coronavirus? Churches are spiritual hospitals and sick people need Jesus Christ. They need access to the preaching of the gospel. In Kansas, a court ruled against the church, said, oh no, the government can shut down a church service. And in California, there was a city council that reversed themselves. First they banned churches and now they're allowing churches. The, the liberal governor of Colorado allows churches. Texas and Florida allow churches to meet. Why are they doing this? Here's what the Bible says in Luke 11. Woe to you lawyers, you load burdens hard to bear and you yourselves don't touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus name for religious liberty to prevail in the long run while the coronavirus is defeated in the short run. Father, we pray that churches will be careful will respect the elderly, but at the same time will not abrogate or cede even one inch of territory to the government to ban worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we have Rick Eldridge and Tim Mahoney, Christian filmmakers against religious persecution. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit, or from angels, or from invisible demons. We've created a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels. We're offering a discount today while supplies last. It used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30 day prayer manual, how to liberate the world in 30 days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org or write to the address on your screen or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. We're here at the NRB convention in Nashville and we have a returning guest and a favorite movie maker of Christian films. Rick Eldridge, welcome to the program. Thank you, great to be here again. So you've made so many Christian movies now that I'm losing count, uh, <laughs> but, but tell us about your latest project, Never Again. Never Again is a documentary uh, about anti-Semitism in our world. Uh, we tell a story of two individuals, uh, a Holocaust survivor, uh, Irving Roth, and uh, we, uh, we were in six different countries around the world shooting his life, basically from where he grew up in Khomeini to, uh, to Auschwitz, and uh, following oh his gosh. story as a 14-year-old kid, very emotional, very uh, uh, just in depth about his life and his story and his experiences. We parallel that with a story about a millennial Pakistani terrorist who uh, 
actually through the course of, of study, uh, read a book called The Case for Israel by Alan Dershowitz. And uh, through that book, began to question the things that he had learned as a child. And uh, so he made his own pilgrimage to Israel. Uh, and that's kind of comical. He spends 10 hours in security because who's going to let a Pakistani passport into Israel? And, uh, Especially get, if he's a terrorist. Exactly. Interrogated <laughs> by all kinds of people. And uh, finally, uh, miraculously, uh, they let him out. I'm sure they tracked him the whole way. Yeah. But he made his way to the wall in Jerusalem and uh, you know, had all these questions burning in his heart about who are these people I want to kill? What is this culture all about? And as he saw the passion of people and their love for God, and he realized that these are people just like me. Why do I want to kill these people? Wow. And he left there with a total 180 of heart, and uh, <laughs> which leads us to the throughput of our story, which is love, not hate. Love, not hate. And you're telling the story of a, a Holocaust survivor who has been to, through Auschwitz as a young person, right. but survived that and grew old, and, and he's part of your film? He is. He tells his story, and then we... Mr. Roth. Uh, yeah, and Irving uh, goes in, into colleges all over the country, kind of telling his journey, telling about what, uh, what experiences he had. And uh, believe it or not, there are uh, factions in our world today that will deny that that even happened, that, that the Holocaust even existed. And uh, kind of like the world is flat, maybe. Right. But, uh, you know, we, going there and seeing this and being into some areas that uh, public hadn't even seen, you know, which we were able to shoot on our film, uh, just uh, riveting to, to hear his story and, uh, and to see where he's come from. And, and yet he has just a love and an acceptance for people. And, and, and the message of the film between Kasim and between him uh, is, is that one of tolerance, of love, of caring, and, and, and of not hate. It's, it's interesting to have these two characters juxtaposed against each other. An older Holocaust survivor, a young Palestinian, I assume Muslim yep. terrorist by his own confession. And by the end, they're embracing each other. And, right. and they're, this is, this is blowing my mind. I've got to see the film. You do, and, and not, even more than that, uh, we'll reveal during the film, uh, if, if you've known a Holocaust survivor, they have a tattoo right here, yeah. uh, which is their number. They, they lose their name, they become a number. Uh, well, in the course of Irving and Kasim meeting each other and Irving really becoming a mentor to Kasim, uh, and there's a passing of the baton. You know, Irving saying, I'm not gonna be here forever, yeah. but this message has to continue to be told. People have to know. Yeah. They have to understand, and, and we have to seek change in our world. Uh, so we will reveal, as you'll see in the uh, in the movie, where uh, Kasim has taken that same tattoo. Let's take a short. Uh, let's roll a copy of the video clip. This is the trailer for Never Again, the documentary. It all begins with words uttered by individuals, repeated by others. and became a philosophy, an ideology. When you become anything without realizing that it's happening, it's called brainwash. I hated America. The Jews were the reason for all the evil in the world. This we must not allow to happen again. Welcome back. So you just saw the trailer, Never Again, the movie.org is the website where you can watch that trailer. But tell us about the rollout of the film. Where can people watch it when it's coming out? It's a Fathom event, which is a day and date uh, theatrical. It'll be in October the 13th and 14th, over a thousand screens across America. And uh, we'll be, uh, you know, every major market will have it. So uh, you can go to our website today and uh, watch the trailer and, and, and sign up to get information. Tickets will be on sale in, on June 1st. Uh, you can also go to fathomevents.com. You know, a lot of people are used to going there for events now. Uh, that can link you back to our site if you'd like for it to. But uh, get information, uh, tell people about it, and we encourage people to come. Uh, come as groups and, and buy your tickets early because uh, we do think that it'll, it'll sell out across America. 
So it's going to roll out in Fathom Events and th Thousand Theaters on October 13th and 14th. That's but right. but now is the time if pastors or groups want to become a theater captain, right. like to to host it and have a little right. discussion beforehand, a discussion afterwards. Bring your party bus, bring your church bus, That's right. uh, and and. Where can people sign up to get that kind of information? Go to our website at uh, you know just neveragainthemovie.org. Never and, again uh, the and movie. they can navigate through all of org. that and find uh, how to be captains. We would love to uh, uh, love to get them engaged and uh, begin to send them information right away. Now you happen to be a Christian. You've made Christian films in the past. This seems to be a, a Jewish and Muslim reconciliation film. Uh, why did you pick this content? Why is it important you know, to you? Uh, you look at the, the news today and in our world, what's going on. Uh, you know, just last week, you know, an ascetic Jew's walking the streets of, of Brooklyn and gets attacked because he's Jewish. Wow. That's the only reason. And uh, so, you know, I want to tell redemptive stories, stories that can make a difference, stories that can affect change. Uh, they can inspire, they can entertain, but more than that, they have to have, to have that redemptive value. So when I was offered the opportunity to make this, uh, you know, there was no question. In fact, I had to move a, another movie later in order to fit this one in, but it was so important that we have it done and we have it ready for this October. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a no-brainer, had to do it. I love what you're doing and I love the concept and I can't wait to see it. Never again, the movie. Dot org is where you can watch the trailer. My guest has been Dr. Rick Eldridge. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. Appreciate All right. It. I'm Dr. Chaps. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Reading today's headlines, doesn't it seem sometimes like the world is unreal? We hear about rumors of wars and we see legislative and cultural battles here in America. But where is our hope? I think it's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're offering now a, a DVD series led by family ministry leader Vince Dacchioli, Real Christianity in an Unreal World. It behooves us to really understand what does it mean to be relevant as a Christian and to be real and to spread the gospel in a way to where more and more people will, be in, will embrace it and move yeah. in the right direction. We can send you the entire DVD series, which is three-part teaching with Vince and a bonus of my personal testimony for a suggested donation of just $30 if you call now at 866-Obey-God or write to the address on your screen or visit PrayInJesusName.org. We want to rush you this important teaching to ground your faith in real Christianity. How is your marriage doing? Ladies, would you like to learn how to get your husband to love you the way Christ loves the church? Men, would you like your wife to show proper respect? You know, there's a Bible way to have a godly marriage. I'm not saying I'm the expert, but we interview in a four-part video teaching series, a marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866 Obey God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D, or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps at the NRB convention in Nashville, where movie maker Tim Mahoney is joining us. He's been on our show before, but he's got these two new movies, Patterns of Evidence, Red Sea Miracle. Part one was already in theaters, now you can get the DVD. Part two is coming out in May. Sign up at Fathom Events. Welcome Tim Mahoney to the program. Oh, it's good to be on your program again, yes. Well, you're like the, the Indiana Jones adventure miracle making movie guy who uh, 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 details the authenticity of the Bible. Uh, remind our audience about the first two movies you made and then this new one. Well, the first one was the, called Patterns of Evidence, the Exodus. And that one explored the question of, was there any evidence for the early Israelites in Egypt? And what we ended up you know, showing in that film was that uh, we see evidence of arrival and it looks like Joseph's family uh, come to Egypt at this place called Avaris. 
It's underneath the city of Ramesses. And that's where we find an amazing pattern of, of evidence for Joseph. The archeological record supports the Bible. It does, it, it matches it. I always like to use the kind of like, well, here's what the Bible says and here's the evidence and it just sort of slides together there. Yeah, and then the second movie you made about that? Well, it was, again, at the same location, what we started to see is that there is a writing system that shows up. The question I raised, it's called The Moses Controversy, is the next film, yep. is did Moses have the ability to write the first books of the Bible? And so I took an, an approach with our team, was, well, what would he have used to write with? And what we find out is that the world's first alphabet is called, it's like, the, it's called Proto-Sinaitic and it's a early form of the alphabet. And it shows up exactly at the right time in the right place where the Israelites lived in Egypt. And it matches the Hebrew letters that became the language of the Ten Commandments in the Bible. That's correct. And what ends up happening there is that this uh, proto sinaitic uh, language becomes the basis, the foundation of all alphabets in the world. And now you have Patterns of Evidence, The Red Sea Miracle. Part one was just in theaters, but now it's on DVD and we're gonna roll a clip. Set up this clip for us. Well, this is the trailer uh, and trailers are meant to show you all the exciting things that are gonna be in a film. And what we're gonna be showing here is a debate between two different views. One I call Egyptian and the other I call Hebrew. And that's the contest that we're looking at. What view seems to match the biblical account more accurately? Let's roll that clip. For almost 20 years, I've been searching for evidence of one of the greatest miracles of the entire Bible, the miraculous parting of the Red Sea. Tim, the first question most people ask is, where's Mount Sinai? My first question as a geographer is, where was the sea that was parted and crossed? So what do you think the crossing site, where would that be? Well, for once, I'm gonna follow the conventional argument here. When I look at the Exodus story through the eyes of a scientist, then it contains a lot of observations which just make sense to modern science. I think it is possible to demonstrate that it took place in close proximity to Egypt. I know that some people would say, well, there were probably 5,000, maybe 20,000 Israelites. This matter of large numbers is a very, very thorny issue. There has to be enough Israelites in order to make Pharaoh and the rest of Egypt scared. Whether the 10 plagues happened is a miracle. Whether the Red Sea parted is a miracle. Archaeology cannot prove or disprove a miracle. Make the sea small, put it close to Egypt, all of a sudden it calls into question the biblical text itself. And you cast their pursuers into the depths as a stone into mighty waters. Where were these ancient lakes and what is now all desert? And what sort of people could stand the strength of the wind that would part that depth of water? Nobody could stand and walk that land bridge mm -hmm. in that sort of wind. It would be impossible. Why is it important to think about these things? At the end of the day, we're really talking about a miraculous event of unprecedented proportion of God's miraculous saving power. The Red Sea Miracle is a two-part film series Fathom event, February 18th and May 5th. Well, that was exciting. Now I want to buy the DVD, Patterns of Evidence, The Red Sea Miracle Part 1. It was already in theaters. You missed it when it came out on Fathom Events. But the good news is, Red Sea Miracle Part 2 is about to hit Fathom Events theaters. And explain to us when we can see this, the, the second half of this. Right. If you go to PatternsOfEvidence.com, you can buy tickets right now for that. And I urge people to do that because we had sellouts all across the nation. We we're going to we're be in 800 theaters. And the Red Sea Miracle Part 2 is going to explore how the water parted. In other words, we're looking at two different areas. One, in the Egyptian approach, I, is the border lakes, the, the shallow, reedy, weedy lakes of Egypt. That's one viewpoint. The other is the Hebrew view, viewpoint, which looks at the Gulf of Aqaba, much 
grander, uh, uh, spectacular, supernatural event that would have happened there. And we're going to look at how water would part in both of those scenarios. How can the water part? So uh, your conclusion after making both of these documentaries is that the Bible is true, that Moses really did see God somehow miraculously part the Red Sea during the Exodus. Well, you know that eyewitness accounts are very, very important. And the biblical text is telling us that Moses is an eyewitness account to this. That's why I wanted to deal with the writing first. Yep. Uh, and he's writing and giving us information. There are, we're going to lead to the question of miracles. We're going to then focus on this Red Sea miracle. Is it possible? How did it happen? In other words, was it a natural phenomena in nature where wind blew across the shallow body of water and this is how it happened and the miracle was in the timing? Or is it spectacular? The fact that God says that they were, or Moses records that the Israelites walked between walls of water. Wow. And so what we're going to be, I'm going to show you what that would look like. Just like Charlton Heston. Yes. In fact, the <laughs> Cecil B. DeMille family is, is really <laughs> happy with uh, what I'm doing. And they've, I, I've actually have used footage from uh, that to show because he is really, Cecil B. DeMille gave us a vision yep. of this biblical epic and how it happened. But I'm going to show you something that might even be bigger than that. I like it. More spectacular than that. What are the dates for Fathom Events of Part 2? May 5th. May 5th. Uh, you can go to PatternsofEvidence.com to get your tickets. I like it. Buy the tickets now and we're out of time. But our guest has been Tim Mahoney. Thank you for being with us. PatternsofEvidence.com is his website. And our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. We really need your financial sponsorship to help us bring you these important interviews and reach you with the gospel. Please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. If you need prayer today, pick up the phone and call us at 866-Obey-God. If we're not there, leave a message after hours or call us Monday through Friday, operators standing by, 866-Obey-God. We want to pray with you. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps. I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting and we pray the news. Where else are you going to see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car. You can watch the video on your smartphone. Visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms. Visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.